Okay, so we're going to start by Todd in a hole. I'm sorry for the accent, uh, which is not quite for me. Did I? <laughs> Ta da! And then we get. Not Todd. I did not see anything. It's right here. <laughs> Anyway, sorry for the mistake. I was close, um, but not quite yet. And then we're going to have the English summer pudding, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the um, with the toad in a hole batter as it, as it needs to rest. We're going to start by uh, using three eggs. Never break your egg on, this, on, the, on the border of your bowl because first of all you might have some shell getting inside and second of all you're going to have some germs that might come from the eggs. Um, every time you use flour, I recommend that you sift it. We're using all-purpose flour. You need to sift it for two reasons. The first reason is that because it's quite humid in Bahrain, you might have, you might find some bugs uh, getting there. Uh, and the second reason is that um, it will get more airy mixture as your your flour is quite packed normally uh, in uh, in your home in a packet or in a container. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix it very well the eggs and this flour. And then I'm gonna add 285 milli of milk. The milli, but then, then again you have the difference in between milk and water, which is not the same. The milk weighs more than the, uh, than the water. As for me, I use always the scale. That's what I do all the time. Sorry. Yes. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. What I do is I, I measure. I have my my, uh, my weight, and that's it. I use the scale all the time. It's also because of the uh, in the sweet dessert, sweet dessert. In dessert, uh, you need to be quite precise with the measurement. So as long as I keep the same measurement, I'm good. Exactly. Yeah. But now. Now you know that uh, you have, um, well exactly, but now you know the scale, they have uh, millis as well as grams. And they can buy from big plants. Absolutely. So you mix it well. And this is quite similar as the uh, crepe batter as well. And ideally you would have to let it rest for three hours. But unless you want to spend three hours with me, um, and even more, I think we're going to shorten that time. And now we're going to let it rest, we're going to go to the summer food. Because in Bahrain, it's not really easy to find some fresh uh, berries. Uh, an alternative way is to use frozen berries, and which is absolutely fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna boil the fruits, but the, we're gonna simmer, sorry. We're gonna simmer for about five minutes. Ideally, what you wanna do is to get the juice out of it. But of course, because it's been defrozen, going to have the juice already but what you want to do is to dissolve the sugar so it brings a nice syrup to it so after that we're going to soak the bread with the lovely juice and then we're going to continue do i smile <laughs> Pour the fruits 
and we're going to add the brown sugar. Now, I added the brown sugar because I like the taste of it. Should you want some uh, white sugar, that's absolutely fine. And then you want to add the sugar. You want to mix it in. Now that's it. I only added all the berries that was um, that was later in the recipe, um, and um, and I just added the sugar. That was a very very simple recipe. Now you're gonna get a bowl, some oil. The oil is not to add taste, but it's more to help the cling film stick to the bowl. is you get some cling film. You want to be generous with it because you don't want any hole to get in there. Otherwise, your summer pudding will be like a, I don't know, like a strainer to put in. Yeah. Okay, and what you do with your hands, make sure you get the plastic a different way. This is the French way of the British way. <laughs> that works as well. Anyway, imagine it is done by a French <gasps> British recipe. <laughs> Oof. That's hard. And then you want to secure it with another layer. Just make sure you have enough clean film. And you want to make sure you have enough clean film because after that we're going to close it. So we have a very tight. And you know what, which is even tougher. Uh, the way, the one I made yesterday is actually even not in a high bowl because we're going to be many. I had to cut small pieces. So this one you're going to see even the rectangular shape. So you just wait until the liquid gets a bit syrupy because of the um, of the sugar. In the meantime, while it's taking a bit of time. I'm going to put some oil into my dish. This is actually for um, the uh, Todd in a hole because uh, you should have actually a higher dish but because my oven doesn't pull that, uh, then I'm going to have to do it with, the, with that one. So you put it in the oven with a little bit of oil. So it gets really, really hot, and then you're going to get your sausage really uh, seared. Sorry? Thank you for that. Bear with me, please. Yeah, 240. 210, you could have gone up to 240. A little bit more syrupy, but I can increase a bit more. and hug and start the smell of the berries. It was actually with uh, Mrs. Judy Jawad. The first recipe I found on the summer pudding was with brioche. Um, and uh, we couldn't figure it out why they use brioche instead of just regular white bread. Now, as you can see, hold on, I'm gonna smile. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, Sorry, where was I? Yes, now. Hi, how are you? Where were you? Um, so, 
I'm missing my uh, yes, brioche. Why brioche? Because now they make it everything not as traditional anymore. Like with the bain perdu now, they make it with brioche as well. So it's actually this texture. Uh, it might be more calorie now. Um, and that's the reason they try to change the dessert now and they kind of make a revisité, as we say. So they make it the traditional recipe with another way. But because we're traditional today, so we're going to use the white place. It's getting thicker. You don't want the fruit to overcook because you still want to have a nice taste to it. What you want is only to have the syrupy taste. Now, Mrs. Gumsey is pouring some. I told you, Mrs. Gumsey. It's not easy. I'm glad they took the picture before that. And you're just going to leave the syrup to uh, strain. What you want is literally cover the whole bowl with the bread soaked with the lovely coulis. You have to make sure you overlap the pieces of bread because as you're going to go along, you're going to close this and the juices actually will the, the bread will absorb the juice, and that's the reason your bread will actually be smaller than the original size. And then you want to make sure they overlap so they don't have like a hole. Otherwise, when you're going to hold mold it the day after, it will be like a... Alors, normally this dish, sorry, I'm going to smile again. <laughs> so normally this dish, um, you have to make it the, the night before. But if you're in a rush, you've been working all day, you don't have, uh, you've been, uh, you're going to, I don't know, you don't have the time anyway, what you can do is wait for an hour. But ideally, if you can do it the, the night before, it's, it's better. So what you want to do is soak them, not over soaking them. Okay. You don't soak them? Really? Okay, well, the French way. <laughs> I soak them, but don't over soak them because otherwise they're going to break. And then make sure they're overlapping, even the, um, the one from the bottom, very important. I hope you can smell the berries, because I can smell from here. And 
then we're going to get some No stress. <laughs> My boss is putting me no stress on the pressure. Because I can take the stress. I'm never stressed, as you know. I'm sure because you are very traditional way of cooking. And I am not. So we'll see. Come on, let's just make sure that all this part is filled through. Okay, so I'm going to close it. Very, very tight. Yeah, but I'm trying to get everything together so I don't... And then what you want to do is just make sure everything is inside. Tight. And then you need to get a smaller bowl. Okay, so I'm going to close it. Very, very tight. Yeah, but I'm trying to get everything together so I don't... And then what you want to do is just make sure everything is inside. Tight. And then you need to get a smaller bowl. If you have some beans at home, you know those baked, uh, those beans that I use to, to bake? You can put some white in. I put some flour as well. What you want is something quite heavy. And something very healthy. I usually use the But I did do at home and it was easier. Voila. And you let it rest for minimum one hour and consider overnight. Okay, and then we're gonna prep some sausages. Look, your uh, sausages is um, first of all, you want to make sure they don't explode, and second of all, that would allow the heat to, uh, to spread even. course, remain very cautious because once it's out of the oven, because it's been so hot, it's going to be very, very hot. And then you want to put it back in the oven. Vegetables, fruits, uh, uh, meat is really progressively you go from the freezer to the fridge. And mind you, the same with the cake, the same with the macaroons. Uh, I don't leave it outside. I really progressively put it in the fridge. So that means I have my freezer is minus 21. So I go from minus 20 because it's more professional one. So you go from minus 21 to five. To Five plus. Already it's a big thing. So if you want to put outside temperature, despite the five you might have, I don't know, it might be 70 degrees in the kitchen, it's still there. It's a big gap. 
Every time, if you if you can, that's much better. You leave it overnight. You change the cling film. You put it in a glass jar, glass container, okay? And you discard any juice, especially with the meat. What you can do is just damp it with a kitchen paper to make sure you don't get any germs in it. And then you close it with cling film. You put it inside the fridge and halas. You're good to go on the next day. I do. If not, if you're in a rush, you forgot to take it from the freezer, you can alternatively use a microwave. I'm not a very big fan of it, but sometimes we just have, don't have the time, we run, we rush, and we don't get things. Already, there are nice golden colors. I'm gonna flip them over. Put it back to the... Oh. How to cut an onion? You've got different ways of doing it. First is to have a very, very sharp knife. The reason is, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, but uh, when you slice an onion, you have the fiber that comes very, very... Um, not acidic, but... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, this is what makes your, your eyes water. So to make sure it won't happen first, you sharpen your, eye, your uh, knife. Second, you open your mouth. Or you can chew a chewing gum. Because if you keep your, your mouth closed, actually it will only come to your, to your eye. You can also use goggles. You know those goggles when you swim? You look a bit funny now. So if your husband, if your husband comes in, walks in, might find you a bit bizarre, uh, but that's that's another alternative. Sorry, ski goggles, even better. You know, especially in Bahrain, this is what you use all the time. So that should be really, really yeah, meaningful uh, in Bahrain. Very big knife. You can actually. Uh, Slice it with the mandolin as well to make sure you have the perfect size onion. But do you know what the mandolin is? We're gonna use it actually tonight from Leyland. Thank you. Um, and this is actually a very good machine to use. Um, so that that slice you any vegetables, especially onion. Um, and it's very nice because it comes with the uh, with a hands-free uh, safe, uh, you know, so you can slice it. But us now, we're gonna have when you shop in the knife. Just make sure you wipe it. Otherwise, you might have some uh, little things coming. Into Food which is not quite nice. And then you have to make sure. Then again, I say it and I repeat it. Some people were not here. Um, I don't burn myself anymore. I just cut. My, I just. I don't cut myself anymore. I just burn myself because I make sure that my thumb is behind my fingers, and I just gonna caress it. So this one, another tool, tip. If your working surface is quite slippery, which could be the case, just have some water to modify. That will hold your cutting board steady. And especially when you're cutting, you don't want it to move. Then gradually, and then the same with the with the garlic. You want to make sure you remove any germs that would come out from your onion or garlic. That's where we're quite lucky there isn't. And then the garlic, you know how to peel it very easily. You just push it down, press it down, and then it, the skin will remove very easily. I know that. You just remove that and then it will come through. 
very nice. You can slice it or you can crush it. You have to understand that the garlic, it grills very, very fast because it's 90% oil. So that's the reason you will retain. We're gonna go back to our sausages. Oops, that's some nice. Rosemary. The butter is ready. Yorkshire 
everything will 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 track and then will be a mess then again. Uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that once you have the oil, you put it in the oven like we did with the sausages, right? Um, then you and then you pour the batter in. You put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, the same way. You come out of the oven and they're done. And then what you need to do is just uh, slice your garlic quite thinly. Always put your um, the back of your blade to put your ingredients inside the pan. And we're gonna add some chicken flavor honey. If you don't have this one, which uh, you can find here in Jawad, but if you don't have it. Uh, you can use cube, which is fine as well. And then you're going to add some water, little at a time. The one I made yesterday. I'm just going to wait until it thickens. Some pepper. And I'm going to add very little salt because of the, uh, of the sausages.
normally, of course, it's kind of a, it comes out of dome, so it doesn't look that big. Uh, and you can add all the fruits that was inside the uh, summer. Very easy. But just make sure you do it the night before, because otherwise it's, it doesn't have the same taste. So here is how it looks inside. Now, Todd, 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 come here. Okay, that would be Toad. Toad? Yes and no. Actually, this is what is named after. Apparently, the sausage looks like a toad as it comes out from there. So, toad in a hole. So. In, a, in, a, in a traditional summer pudding, you would serve it with a with fresh cream, can epes from France. You know that's just a, it's a double cream. Okay. Uh, until the inside is all the way cooked through, uh, which I think it is, but it has to be a more golden color. Uh, now the tricky part, how to cut this one. It's still warm, so. still warm so this way there is no way if you can turn it back it will be like uh, maybe you can check uh, I don't know have you been lost I think your grandchildren deserve it okay so that. Did you enjoy the summer pudding? Yes. I am surprised you're eating it now. Because you're going to eat sweet and then savory? You don't mind. You're like my daughters. Well, oh, that's the best way. You're absolutely right. Healthy wise, you should eat sweet and then savory. The reason is that whenever you give sugar to your brain, the brain says, give me more. So when you eat the savory, you say, okay, fine done my duty, so it's a nice way of it. Absolutely, even though I still cannot get over that one. Okay, so now it's going to be a tricky part. to cut this. Try to cut this. Bear with me. I cannot make funny faces because otherwise the camera will shoot at it. See the smile when you put it. So nobody notices you're actually in trouble. But I am in trouble. And that's the case in one. Next time I make it a small tent. Oh, okay, I do that. Then all the sausages will come in. Oh. This one? But it doesn't take me. 